All right, welcome back. It's still morning line with Nancy and it's our interview segment. Uh, we have joining us in the studio this morning, uh, Deto Kumbo Kayodi, the president of Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He will be looking uh, at the issues of non-oil, the non-oil sector, revenues, and generally the state of the economy. Welcome to Money Line. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, I think we'll, we'll start off with um, the inflation figures uh, that has just come out, uh, talking about the fact that inflation has gone up from 11.28% uh, to 11, gone down actually from 11.28 to 11.23%. From 11.23 to 11.28%. 11 11 11 yes. <laughs> what, what, what is your reaction? And this trend is, uh, has been on now for a couple from the last two months. Well, yes, uh, there's a slight increase uh, in the inflation rate, and I think it's mainly due to the pressure of food. Uh, that, is the, that is the general belief that due to pressure of food. But uh, don't forget that the economy is still very, very weak, okay? We still have substantial unemployment. The production capacity has not improved yet, and the regulatory framework, the regulatory environment has also not improved. In spite of the effort at ease of doing business, things have not really, really improved. So... Yes, uh, we, there is that slight increase, but it, it is, it's work in progress. It is expected that by early next year, it may slightly come down, but depends on what the food basket gives us uh, at the end of the rainy season. All right, let me come in here now, sir. We, 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 the discussion today is going to be supposed to around economic diversification. Now, I want to ask you, from 2015 till date, would you say that the journey of economic diversification has been successful? Well, uh, it has started. Um, I think it's still early in the day to talk about whether we have achieved real success. But it has started. There's a lot of emphasis on agriculture, uh, lots of emphasis on mining, okay? Lots of emphasis on um, production, on the startups, and the, 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 you know, the framework. Even the, the, the service sector, too, there's emphasis on doing a lot of things. But, you know, Economic development and growth is not a one-day thing. You need to put in solid um, policies, implementation plan, and begin to consistently, with all, 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 all commitment, to implement it. And as you move along, you tweak it. I have not seen any attempt at tweaking, for instance, the, the payback, uh, I mean, the, the, the ease of doing business yes, and all yes. these other policies. I have not seen any of uh, tweaking it. Uh, the impression seems to be that, oh, we have started is of doing business program, it has succeeded. We have implemented AIGP, it has succeeded. No, it has not. But we're on the right track, but there's need to do small things, good things, steadily and consistently. Talking about small things and doing things steadily, uh, you interact with business operators and you know, yes. business owners. What is that uh, issue that keeps, that, that re echoes, you know, that is, you want to see the, the, the issues that they raise? Well, from my interaction as president of the chamber and a member of NASIMA and also as a businessman myself, I think the greatest challenge has always been government. Funny enough, even though the desire to get things working, but the greatest challenge is government. The government agencies are a stumbling block to business. And unfortunately, unfortunately we are in a catch to two here because, for instance, the, the, the tax regime we are implementing is anti-growth. You understand? Secondly, there's no serious attempt to bring the, uh, the, the, on, the, the, the unofficial sector of the economy, which is the bulk of our economy, yes, or the, the sector. informal sector. Yes. Mm. There's no attempt to bring it into the formal sector. Rather, policies have been put in place that appear as if they're antagonistic to development. Even though I know that the desire, the, the, the aim really is to make things work, but it's, it's just hanging there up at the villa level, but it's not trickling down. The states are not keen to it at all. So that is the challenge. But yes, there's a desire to get things to, to move. There's a desire to, to really diversify the economy. But it's not going to, it's, it's not going to remain with the vice president, yeah. who is not pushing sleeping on this drive. matter. He's yeah. pushing. But the, the states must imbibe it. The government agencies, all those agencies, hundreds of them, who are putting roadblocks, who are locking the door and throwing the key away, they need to get them to, to, to slow down and know that the desire to make things work. When, when business begins to thrive, when industries begin to produce, when the agro products begin to, begin to process, you can take your tax. But don't tax industries that have not made any profit. They have not even started. 
Now, sir, still staying with the fact that you are heading the ACCI, yes. you, know, you said production capacity is very low. And in your interactions with manufacturers, because in order to show up revenue, we must not only put the spotlight on agriculture. We have the manufacturing sector, we have the solid mineral sector, we have the maritime sector, like you have rightly stated. Yeah. What has been the, what, are, what has been that? Apart from the government being at antagonistic to them, many would like to disagree with you on that. But what, what, what has been the major challenge they have communicated to you? First of all, I, I admit uh, two distinctions. I want to clear that the government has a desire to get things to work. Yeah. That's why they put in these policies and try to do it. But it's not trickling down to the, 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 the where it's really being implemented. That is the point. So there is need for government to rejig its strategy about implementing the policies. That's one. What are the actual challenges? The usual, the, the regular stuff, power and all this. But then look at power. Power is business. But there's a lot of problem out there that nobody can really understand why we cannot, the, both the operators and the regulators in the power sector cannot come together and have a clear focal point of how to proceed with the industry. There are always, uh, the government or the uh, regulatory bodies will accuse Yes, uh, blame the discos, yes. The discos were accused of Why can't we just come down and say, what is the issue? Put it on the table and let us kill it. Sure. So the issue of power is there. Take, for instance, just a recent uh, publication, I think two days ago, that Nigerian ports is the most expensive in the world, the least efficient and the most, the, um, the most expensive in the world. Now, that affects a lot of things. Don't forget, even when we want to do agro-processing, after farming, because there's no point in continuing to be producers of primary products. Mm. But we need to add value to it. Sure. Key into the entire value chain. All of that involves the port. Either you're importing equipment, yeah. which you have to, or you're importing uh, spare parts or raw materials, or you want to export your, your produce. Yeah. But if the, if the port is so expensive, is so inefficiently managed, then that gives you a challenge. Add that to the issue of you have to get all kinds of you have to you have to compare all kinds yes. of all kinds of things but yes. then the 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 f then the, the funding you know government has actually is, uh, has endeavored cba and they've done a great job mm. government said to push out a lot of money into smes but is it really getting there what is the rate of of, of what is the first of all the, the, even the process the mechanism for the funding is a big challenge and I know that uh, the gentleman, the MD of uh, BOI, is been yes. working hard to see how we can really deliver this money to those who need it at reasonable rates. Okay, but you just find out from from our members who ask them, they they they, they complain, they cannot access this funding, and what they can do, the cost, whether both formal and informal cost, no. jacks up the, the 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 cost of the funding and makes it difficult for them. So again, it still boils down to the whole apparatus of government keying in into that dream, that vision that, look, we must fund our SMEs, we must, uh, that is the that is 80 percent of our industry. Yes, yes. And we must encourage people to move, the SMEs to move from the informal to the formal sector. sector. Now, you know the advantage of that? There's a lot of noise about, oh, collecting tax, tax avoidance, yes. tax dodging now. But if people are not in the formal sector, it's difficult to tax them. They are registered. You, you understand? So, yes. rather than just uh, jacking up the, I mean, like 35 percent uh, tax. It's, 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 it's not it's anti-production as far as I'm concerned. But it, that's not even the issue. The issue is that you can get more people into the tax net, net, so you can tax them at a reasonable rate. In fact, why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you pay tax? Everybody has a duty to pay tax, reasonable tax. But there's a principle of law that says the power to tax involves the power to destroy. Yeah. Because you can tax somebody to death, especially when you are taxing him, whether he makes profit or not, whether you are taxing him even before he starts his business. Government collects a lot of um, 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 what do you call it? stamp duties. I want to borrow a million naira from a bank. Government takes a percentage of it, of my loan. That is federal government stamp duties. Then you pay registration fees for to register the mortgage because you must sign some documents and you must register it. Corporate Affairs Commission take a percentage of your money, of a loan. No, just tell me, does that add up? Then I'm going to pay 23%, 24 interest on the entire amount, mm -hmm. even on the money that government has taken from me. So we need to go step back a little bit 
and we look at it so that it can key because the vision is there really to make things work. Every government wants to succeed, and I appreciate that. But you need to <laughs> step back a little bit. Look at the areas that form the stumbling block that does, does not allow for production, and things will begin to happen. Then yeah. when it begins to happen, you can have tax. Now, these issues you raised, uh, I'm sure you must have also presented them to the government. One would want to find <coughs> out if the same government who you said wants to make things work is not listening to the things, you know, uh, in, uh, blocking or in the clog of the wheel of progress. Well, you see, um, <coughs> it's like this. The, 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 the policy generally in Nigeria is driven by the federal government. But most of those policies are actually implemented at the state level. And if the state don't key into it, it's a big challenge. The, the, and I think that is why in the Constitution, we have the National Economic Council, yes. which includes all the governors, and is chaired constitutionally. It's not a matter of appointment, it's mm. by law, by the Vice President. Yes. So he is the, the economic czar of Nigeria. Okay? So he, 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 that council must be strengthened. As far as I know, it, is, it meets, but it's like uh, an ad hoc body. Well, it's really a, a well-founded body. And so that the states must key, must, must, must flow with the federal government. Because really the federal government is just there on top. The states are down this way, okay? The agri all the agri uh, policies, for example, can only be implemented at the state level. Yes. So if, for instance, I have a farm in a village, the law is that under the Land Use Act, the local government can give you CO4 for your agri land. They can give up to 500 hectares. And for ranching, by the, by the way, for as, as my husband, yes. they can give up to 5,000 hectares. The local government. But there's no way in this country today where the states have allowed the local government to give CFOs. Now, tell me, how do I raise funds from Bank of Agri or from any of these uh, funding that is available if I do not have a document of title? Because you have to go to the state at yeah. uh, your headquarters to get, and you know, they are going to ask you to, to bring a, a bit of your blood or whatever it is before you can pay. So this is the whole idea. The, the, the money is there up there. The government is, has this larger, but they must allow you to come down. We are, not, we are in the federal system. So they must find a way to get the, the state to key into the, uh, in, into the vision. And I think it, is, it is, can be done by strengthening the National Economic Council let it have a secretariat so the policies taken can be can pushed up. Yes. They can, can follow, up follow up and there will be monitoring and evaluation of activities. I want to also ask, we know most states in Nigeria can't survive without the, the monthly fact handout from Abuja. Now, would you say that we are not seeing enough willpower from the state governments to implement some of these policies you have mentioned? Because if you have businesses trickle into your states, definitely they will want to pay taxes and this will be revenue for, for the states. You are right. The, the, the states can hardly survive without money they get from Abuja. But what do they use the money for? As far as I know, there is no framework, no regulatory framework for, to guide how the states will spend the money given to that state. The money is not given to the governor. Even though some governors believe that it's my money, but it's no, it's for the state. There's nothing wrong in the National Assembly actually, in fact, not nothing wrong. They ought to, they must, they should make, create a framework. Look, money from, uh, from the federal account, federation account, is for development of the state. And you need to, and this is suggestion about how you can develop a state. You are an agri uh, agrarian state, you should do this, you can do this, you can do cocoa, do uh, cassava, whatever. Then you, you move into that, stuff, you know, and invest that money in that place. But we use that money from the FAC account, you use it for paying salaries to do other ancillary issues, yes. then it's not going to happen. You will need to assist because we are the same government, even though it's federal, the same Nigeria, and all the states, if it's okay with one state, maybe it would be better, but if all the states have problems, the federal government is in trouble. So we need to, uh, there must be a framework for which they guide, they use this money for physical, infrastructural and economic development of the state. And mm -hmm. there should be a means of reporting back, so means of um, monitoring and evaluation. Yes. You, you understand? At least you take this money from the federation account, it's yours, but, at least, but we really we mm -hmm. ought to know what uh, all is being spent for. Look at so much money is flying out, the Paris funds is being done. What we are they being used for? Yes. What, what, so you let us, there should be a means of at least checking what we have used the money for. All right, I think also we want to look at the f aspect of uh, what the <coughs> federal holds 
Uh, maybe, maybe now I'm looking at the power sector. You've mentioned that as one of the challenges, you know, that is affecting business operations in Nigeria. Do you think that, because I know right now there's, there's, there's a review of the arrangements uh, about uh, w the privatization issues. Do you think states need to be allowed to generate their power, even though this is actually a responsibility like being monitored by the federal? Under the law, anybody, you, your company, the state, anybody can generate power. But to what, to what, they're talking <coughs> about capacity now and the you know, level. That, that is another thing. Like, on those states uh, were built, of, um, well, built in code, um, in 20 megawatts, uh, whatever, is now taken up, but they've spent some money on that. Any state, river state, many states can do that. But we need to rethink again how and why we manage. For instance, we have just a grid, a national grid. That is a cake. It cannot serve the purpose of Nigeria of today. We need to have various gr mini grids, mini grids. regional grids. And that idea actually is being pushed by the RA, the Royal Education Agency yes. right now. Yes. We are aware of that. Now, they need to bring this out to the public. And is it, is it where the, the issue of coordination is, and that is one of the key challenges. We do not need to put power here and just put it around the whole region or the whole country, you could have actually embed yeah. the, the generation so that if determine that, let me rewind a bit. I want every state in this country to designate areas as industrial centers, industrial clusters, or industrial layout, whatever name you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Then you put in power to service that area. Then you, you look at institutions, and that's been done in the small scale now. Look at University of, let's take ABU. I think the population is about 70 to 80 million. You put in a power program for them. Like that, so there will be embedded, there will be embedded systems. Then you begin to, to say, we need to rethink how we do things. And these ideas are out there. We, will, as private sector, we want to continue to engage with government. Okay, sir. <laughs> Let me hold, uh, because we'll come back to the issue of public-private partnership. We hope you are, you are joining the conversation on social media, at, Mon at Moneyline AIT on Twitter, on Facebook at Moneyline with Nancy. Send us your comments, send, up, send us your question. We have an expert with us, Adeto Kumbo Kayode. He's the president of the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Let's quickly take this moment. We'll be right back. Right there, you have it cards uh, from the inflation figure for the month of uh, September that was released uh, uh, month on month 0.84 percent increase from 11.23 percent recorded in August. Now, uh, Prince, we want to, to the, the issue of inflation how does it you know for business operators how does all of this add up uh, in terms of your output and still talking about competing uh, with the goods, especially on the global scale? <coughs> well, um, for me, um, the, the, the rate of inflation affects the cost of production, so it makes it more expensive, and you have to pass on that cost to the consumer. So that is, that is I mean, simple economics. But I think it, it goes beyond that because um, it makes also our production non-competitive vis-a-vis uh, okay. -vis, uh, other, other people, and uh, it is difficult to keep cheap goods from your country. Especially with the porous borders people, and... Yes. Uh, Look, there's no border that is not porous. Everybody, people smuggle. It's, it's the business they do. It's wrong, it's criminal, but they do it. Now, we, we, it's very important that 
the ones the, there are some things we can control, yes. like the the on uh, the uh, the excess the the high cost of regulation. We can reduce that. That will help to reduce the cost of production, mm. the high cost of regulation. Government, the federal government has a duty, honestly, to engage with its own regulators, with its own agencies, and really find out exactly what they, they're doing. First of all, determine that they are doing the work they were established to do. Yes. Most of regulatory bodies are not revenue-making organizations. As far as I'm, at least NAVDAC was not set up to make revenue, but NAVDAC is making revenue, just like JAM, for instance. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable that somewhere somebody will clamp for JAM for making profit. The, 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 the CEO of JAM is, some, is a very good friend of ours. We know him. And what he tried to do was correct. Look, JAM is making 10 billion naira profit. We send it to government. But for me, I want him to slash the price, the, the cost of jam itself. Jam is not established to make business, to make profit. So instead of the ten thousand parents pay, reduce it to two thousand. So that it will aid uh, it, more it people to people will school feel school government capacity. more yes. Yes. Sure. rather than say, oh, I have returned X amount of money. Look, where there's a lot of money, people will steal it. If whether the the CEO is, a, is an imam or is a saint, people below him will find a way around it. So he must understand slash the price of jam. Reduce the cost of regulation. I think this applies across the board now. Because you are not set up to be money making bodies. Just to make people ease of doing business, make doing business easy, make it fluent, make it, make it efficient. So just concentrate on your efficiency of the system and improving on standards and establishing standards. Stop revenue issues because you are not set up to, uh, to, to collect revenue. Now, that will reduce the cost of production help us to reduce the cost of prices and reduce inflation. I, okay, I think government will, I just, just a follow up, yes. I think government would not want to buy the idea of, you know, <laughs> revenue, you know, reducing revenue, revenue at this revenue time when they're something. talking about. I agree, but there are agencies set up to collect revenue. That's your primary Primary mandate. focus. Yes. But if you are just a regulation, you see, what's the meaning of regulation? Regulation means that this is the right thing to do, do it. So don't make obeying the law expensive. If I can put it in that raw way, yes. we we have a tendency to make obeying the law expensive and is obeying the law cheap. If it's regulation and you have to make sure that uh, we are enough that we do the right thing, don't put any money on it. Just guide people to do the right thing. They will do it. Make obeying the law cheap. Make disobeying the law very punitive and expensive. But. Of course, not, uh, the agents that collect money. They let them collect their own money. But if you are to make sure that people obey the law, uh, they, they do the bring the right drugs in, or they do bring the right standard, of, then don't put any money to it. That's my thinking. Some time ago, we saw the, the government, when the vice president was inaugurating the MSME's clinic in Enugu, we saw him slash the amount that businesses are going to pay for registration from 10,000 oh, to 5,000. Yes, yes. I think, you, would you agree with me that that's a good move, especially for small businesses? A ab absolutely. And the fact that he did that shows you that gradually we are, we are getting to be on the same uh, wavelength that the cost of regulation is getting too high. And it's overburdening production. And it's being passed on to the public. So he did the right thing there. But I want him to go several steps further. If I borrow money from First Bank, and we have to register the, my mortgage in the Corporate Affairs Commission, they should not charge a brass farthing on that. You just pay a token amount for registration rather than say they will charge you by the percentage of your loan. Because that money is going to be paid back and the cost is going to be passed on to the consumer. Now I want to come back to the issue of the public and private sector partnership. Now, if we, must, if we must achieve significant success in economic diversification, we must have synergy between this, the, the two bodies. You are in the private sector. Is there enough synergy whereby we know that when the government comes into the private sector, because they are the money makers, they are the ones that we know we can generate revenue from. Is there enough synergy? Are they in sync? Uh, well, um, let's, let's start this way. There is, again, a desire by the Chairman of National Economic Council, the Vice President, to bridge this that gap that's always existed between the private and private sector. Regularly, on a quarterly basis, he meets with the private sector. Okay, so that's one attempt to see how they can bridge that gap. You see, 
there's what they call PPP, public-private partnership. That is how the economy and the only way the economy will prosper. The public and the private must take themselves as partners. There are, there's a desire to do this, but it is not happening. There's always that antagonistic, it tends towards antagonism between the public and the private. I was, for a period of time, in the, in the public sector, and I saw it, and I was shocked. Because I've always been a private sector person, that I went to the public for four years, and I came back to the private, and I couldn't believe it. Why can't we, things that relate to business, we should get the private sector involved. And then, the, those that the civil say, oh, because you came from the private sector, no, no, this is not how we do our thing. But any government that signs an MOU with a company is wasting its time. Unless you want to carry government money and give to that company. The only people that can do business are the business people. So every step government takes, you must go with the private sector with them. And there's an attempt to begin to do this. Take, for instance, some months ago, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, well, actually the Vice President, mm -hmm. uh, launched this, uh, this NEDAI, uh, the yes, Nigerian yes, yes. Economic Diplomacy Initiative. Initiative. Yes. And the whole of that means, what it, that means is that anytime the Minister of Foreign Affairs is traveling to any country, he goes to members of the private sector. Yes. So that as he's doing his political business, the yeah, business people will be engaging. Issues. They call it economic diplomacy. Makes a lot of sense. And I was happy. In fact, I represented the, uh, the OPS at the launching. Mm -hmm. And I encouraged them to do that. But as far as I'm concerned, it is not happening. That is one. Two, government will not be able to do everything. We all know this. Whether it's power, schools, f uh, health, everything. Even roads. The government must allow private sector, private sector to come into this. Now, to do this, don't forget that the government set up this um, um, national, what is the name, national uh, infrastructure uh, concessional yes, uh, yes. body, one body like that. Yes, <coughs> ICRC. Yes. Infrastructure concessional. Yes, body. yes. Now, that is supposed to be the PDP, uh, PPP regulator for Nigeria. Mm. Check it out. What are they doing? You understand? We need to strengthen them. We need to make sure they begin to do this. Take, and don't, 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 again, that body should just do what is established to do. Well, for the, Go out of the way and get the uh, private sector to be involved in... For, uh, the, for the, the ICRC, without, you know, standing for them, I think I've seen uh, that it's currently having the Ichidi Zoo as the acting head yes. there. I, I've seen a couple of uh, meetings, you know, on regulatory concessions and all of those things. But one issue that we want to find out also is the aspect of government interference, government changes hands, uh, you are not <coughs> in tune with this uh, private sector person. Why do, do, for us to have unique you know, concession agreements, what do you think we need to actually, apart from, you know, it doesn't mean, do you have to put in laws to say whether government changes or not, you need to respect, you know, those uh, agreements? Continuity. Well, is it, government is a continuum. So, whether one president goes, another one comes in, or one party goes, it really should be totally irrelevant. That is why those agents exist. I know Chidi quite well. He's relatively new in that place. But go and check out the law. The law established RCRC, on one hand, gave it certain authorities, on the other hand, took it away. Okay? So, you see, the commitment to do PPP is not there yet. It is not, don't forget that RCRC on is not created part? by this yes. government. On whose part? Just, let's just look. We are not going to revenge the will. Okay. There are program ways of doing this. Just check out the country that is doing it. Take their template and panabit it, adjust it to suit it's your own local. environment. Mm -hmm. but, but, but government must understand that it cannot fund this alone. Private sector can come in and private sector can get more funding DFI than government. All these DFIs you see, direct foreign investment, is coming to the private sector. Mm -hmm. No person will give his money to Nigerian government or indeed any government to go and use it unless the Chinese, in which case you are patronizing Chinese companies. Right? And that, that's a step on that story entirely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so would, in terms of percentage, how far would you say we are, this administration has gone, even as we, the electionary season has kicked in in full gear? Percentage, well, we yeah. have run out <laughs> of time. <laughs> well, um, the, the, the government has done averagely well. But the tendency is to beat your chest, that, oh, we have done very well. No. 
it is work in progress. I make that point earlier. They, they've identified some of the challenges. They begin to push it. And they need to do more. We need to rejig, re, 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 relaunch the um, uh, neighboring business environment yes. policy, the ease of doing business policy, and even the R ERGP. They need to take a step further. ERGP is just for three or four years. We need a 10-year rolling plan on a three, three by three basis so that you can really be able to review your progress and, yes. and move on. Okay, it's World Food Day. I also want to ask, what is your favorite Nigerian dish as we celebrate World Food Day today? Uh, I think it's pounded yam. Pounded yam soup? Uh, well, a foreign will do very well. <laughs> okay, so. And you will put a little um, uh, fish inside it, I'll be very happy. Oh. All right, we'll be speaking with Adet Kumbo Kayode. He's the president of Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry. That's the much we can take today. That's where we draw the curtains. I think it has been. And he's just smiling. I hope yeah, you, well, you, you well, give I, me. I was, I'm also surprised that um, the choice, <laughs> you know, we're coming from the southwest. For you, is for you. Okay, uh, then probably you owe me fried rice if we live. If we live, <laughs> if we live here. Well, so far <laughs> we are eating, uh, and you can also you can eat jollof fries. <laughs> Look like. Uh, Senegalese. <laughs> Prince, you don't want to start the jello fries controversy here. <laughs> That's what we can take on today's program. I am J Momo. Let's do this again tomorrow, 11 a.m. I, I am Christiana Amodu. Thank you for investing your time with us.